All right, so Rob and I are here today. Uh, Toby with uh, Toby's Pawn Shop is not here, but we're, we're here to announce that we are filing in the Albemarle Circuit Court today a suit against Ralph Northam, against the State Health Commissioner, against the Attorney General, and against the Albemarle County Commonwealth's Attorney. We're filing this lawsuit because our governor has unilaterally decided to create a dress code for Virginia. It's very unfortunate because there's no legal authority for this, but it's even more unfortunate because citizens of Virginia don't know what to do. There is a law on the books, has been for decades, that makes it a class six felony to wear a mask that conceals your identity in public. That's been the law for decades. Now our governor says it's a misdemeanor if you don't wear a mask in public. What is an honest citizen to do? Toby from Toby's Pawn Shops, he deals in firearms. It creates a hazard when you have people with masks in a shop that sells firearms. It creates a risk of robbery, and we've seen robberies across the country from people wearing masks. In fact, the riots in Richmond just recently, they were wearing masks as they lit fire to a police car and a bus. So this is, this is a safety problem. It's a legal problem. It's completely without any authority that the governor has done this, and we're standing up and we're saying the court needs to stop him. I'm happy to give it over to Rob for a second if he wants to say a few words, and then I'll take any questions anybody has. So I'm pleased to be involved in this because I have been receiving as a public person in the media a number of inquiries from members of the public, uh, from listeners to my show, emails, phone calls, people who have been concerned about where can we turn. This looks like it's problematic legally. We're being asked to do something that may jeopardize our health. And so what are we to do? So when I had an opportunity to serve as a plaintiff in this case, I did it not only for myself, but for the scores of people who have contacted me and expressed concern on social media and to me directly, what can we do? Well, this is what we can do. The governor is not above the law. He has to follow and abide by the same laws that everybody else does, and that includes me and Matt, the governor, and all of his minions. So I'm very, very pleased that Matt has stepped up to take this case, and also that Toby of Toby's Pawn Shop has agreed to participate as well. It's never an easy thing to put yourself in the public light in a controversial situation, but there has to be people who are willing to do the right thing. And I know uh, Matt can tell you that if there are others who would like to participate, uh, there's still room for more on this lawsuit. And I have been approached by people throughout the Commonwealth. I anticipate we will file another suit later in the week up in the northern part of the state. Uh, it's, it's encouraging to see people starting to stand up to this governor because what he's done is, is again, without authority, and it's, it's creating a hazard for Virginians all over the place. So we're going to stand up and do as much as we can together to fight what the governor's up to. Anybody have any questions? Matt, can you speak to the constitutionality or lack thereof of what the governor's done? Is that going to be a part of your suit? So the, the governor cited Article 5 of the Virginia Constitution, which says, among other things, and this is ironic, that he has to faithfully execute the laws of Virginia. Now, the governor gets delegated authority by the legislature. He's supposed to only do what he has power to do under, under the law. And the legislature made pretty clear, as I said decades ago, that masks are illegal in the Commonwealth of Virginia. It's a class six felony. So when the governor unilaterally decides not only is he not going to follow the legislature's directive, but he's going to come up with a completely opposite directive and penalize it by making it a misdemeanor. I think that's pretty clearly unconstitutional, and I'm hoping that the court will agree. Great. Thanks. Can you speak to the two, uh, was it what he cites for his legal authority? He cites, as I said, Article 5 and then three code sections. And if you look at the code sections, none of them give him the power to do what he's doing. The executive order is also signed by the state health commissioner because the state health commissioner has a few more powers than he does. But there's still no broad power to impose a dress code on all Virginians in all buildings everywhere. Uh, it's, it's never been done, and there's a reason it's never been done, because it's unprecedented and it's not within the governor's power. Outline differences in this case to the arguments that are being made at the case of Gold's Gym and Gold Pepper. Well, I think Gold's Gym is looking for an opportunity to open to be exempt. And I think Gold's Gym is right, and it's unfortunate that the courts haven't agreed with Gold's Gym. But there's something called the unconstitutional conditions doctrine, where the government can't take something away from you, even if it's a privilege, even if the government doesn't have to give it to you. The government can't take it away and then give it back if you follow certain rules that, would, that they otherwise couldn't impose upon you. So under that unconstitutional conditions doctrine, they can't say, we're going to let you go uh, about your business as you always would. We're going to let you go in public, but only if you 
break the class six felony mask wearing law or only if you follow our exact directive. Can you speak to the argument that the mask law only applies when the intention is to hide one's identity? Well, I think that you've seen in Richmond, the, the riders were hiding their identity with these <laughs> surgical masks, which is part of the problem. But it's also something that's always been inferred. I mean, very few people say outright, I'm wearing a mask to hide my identity. The Klan never announced they were wearing masks to hide their identity, but it's inherent in their behavior. And so courts have always inferred from other facts whether your intention is to hide your identity or not. Nobody ever announces it outright. And I think that that's what puts everybody at risk is who's going to decide what my intention is when I wear a mask. If it's a surgical mask, you might say, well, that shows he's, he's doing it for medical reasons and not otherwise. But the code specifically says under normal circumstances, you have to have an affidavit from your doctor to wear a mask in public. That's not what's going on here. Uh, and again, the riders in Richmond, a lot of them were wearing surgical masks. So you can't just go by the type of mask. It's not, is it a clan mask or is it a surgical mask? They're, the riders are using all sorts of masks. And I think this subjective intention requirement is going to put a lot of people at risk of being prosecuted. Are there any other states that have similar cases? I haven't heard of anybody suing over a mask requirement. As far as I know, this was the first one. It's definitely the first one in Virginia, although I do anticipate a few more. Isn't there something in Maine? What? Isn't there a similar case in Maine? There, there are several cases in Maine. Maine has applied a bunch of requirements to campgrounds, among other things. And with the, the federal court in Maine ruled is that with these vague requirements, because that was part of the problem in Maine, where the governor issues an order and it's incredibly vague, like ours, where there's eight different categories of places you have to wear a mask, but then there are certain exceptions, and then he says sometimes he's going to enforce it by class one misdemeanors, but sometimes he says he's not going to enforce it, and it's only a suggestion. And basically the federal district court in Maine said it's either a law, and, and then you have to follow due process and let people know what's going to get them arrested, or it's a sincere suggestion, but it can't be both. And that's uh, that's in our lawsuit too, as a quote from the court case. Pat, are you going to speak to the dubious nature of the health benefits or lack thereof of wearing a mask? It's it's in the suit, and I think that there is significant data that masks become, especially if they're worn improperly or for too long, a bacterial sink, and it can put people at risk. We've cited some data for that, and especially with homemade masks, we've cited some data for that in the suit. I think Toby's Pawn Shop, as I said, is scared because they think it creates a risk of criminal activity in their store. But another reason that they're filing this lawsuit is because they might be putting their employees at risk. If you have an eight or 10 or 12 hour shift and you wear a mask continuously, over time that mask becomes colonized by bacteria and it can create a risk of bacterial infection. Um, employers are in a tough spot because are they civilly liable if they force their employees to wear masks and their employees get sick uh, when the governor's the one that's making them do it. It's, it's really a tough spot to be in, and that's part of why we're filing this lawsuit on behalf of Toby's Pawn Shop. I would think there'd be some OSHA implications as well. Absolutely, absolutely. If there's nothing else from anybody, I'll... The case of Northern Virginia, or cases in Northern Virginia, are they similar? Yeah, I think that, I'm limited in what I can say right now, but there will be a business owner in Northern Virginia that will be filing in the next few days. Would it be part of your class or would it be a separate filing? It'll be a separate filing. And uh, I've been approached by numerous business owners. If there's anybody else that wants to join this fight, I'm happy to hear from anybody. And uh, I'm going to keep fighting for citizens and for business owners across the Commonwealth. Right now, we're starting in Elmore County. If anybody else wants to join in in other counties, please give me a vote. How many cases do we potentially see across the state? Well, so far, I know of two. Um, I have heard of business owners in other counties that have been impacted by this and want to do something about it, but I don't know how many of them will actually stand up. It's hard as a business owner to put your yourself on the line here. A lot of people think that what the governor's doing is illegal, but they've been threatened with the Department of Health Enforcement that could shut their business down, and so they don't want to stand up against the governor because of the, the possible risk. Mm -hmm. And that's that's sad, but I understand that the business owners feel like they're in a tough spot. I'm glad Toby stepped up. Well, they just thought about you talking about businesses in a tough spot. They may want to file, but they're financially having some issues. Huh? Is there help that they can obtain from? from I'm filing? doing all these suits pro bono. I'm not. Uh, I'm not making a dime off of this. I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do, and because this governor's gotten out of hand. Did the, go did the governor cite any health benefits to, to mask wearing in his executive he, order? He vaguely cites health benefits. He any, stu any, any studies or anything? 
Exactly. That's the problem is he's not citing studies that show surgical masks worn in public uh, by the general populace have a positive effect or much less homemade masks worn in public have a positive effect. Uh, you may recall the CDC two months ago said don't wear a mask. The WHO much more recently said don't wear a mask. We've cited some literature about the impossibility of proving a benefit for masks in the suit. We've also cited some literature that shows that the masks become colonized by bacteria over time, so there might be a detriment. Uh, I wish the governor had cited some, some studies in his order so that we could compare and contrast. He has not.